Passage 3. Listen to part of a talk in a history class. People in the Revolution. Last class, we were talking about the timeline of the Mexican Revolution. Remember, we talked about how it had its beginnings in 1910 and that the real violence ended about 1920. So we are looking at about a 10 year plus time period. Now, today, I want to discuss with you some of the people who were significant in the revolution. And I am not going to focus on military leaders and political figures. What I want to bring to your attention is the role of women in the revolution. At this time in Mexico's history, men and women were not considered equals. The men were dominant, and women were mainly involved in home, family, and the church. But women played key roles in the revolution in many ways. They were advocates for what they believed in, they were involved in politics, and they helped on the battlefields. Let's talk about the women who were involved in politics first. Mexico's class system did not deter women from being involved in politics. Women from both the high and low classes became involved and became prominent in politics. One of these women was Dolores Jimenez y Muro. D. O. Lores Jimenez y Muro. Jimenez for short. Jimenez was a political writer and an important one. High ranking revolutionary leaders listened to her ideas and she was very well respected. She was a school teacher and she was considered to be a radical. She helped form a plan that would provide for many reforms in the country that she believed would help the common people. She thought the people needed better working conditions, better wages, better education, and changes in working conditions and the length of working hours. She put some of her own ideas into the new government plan she was proposing. She suggested that schools be locally funded and controlled. She wanted each school to receive individual attention. She also wanted better housing for the lower classes and wanted to have the government and landlords to charge lower classes less rent. She also wanted women to be included in any economic reforms the government instituted. Weren't women already in the workforce? Yes, but most women worked in less significant and perhaps, from a man's point of view, less respected jobs. For example, many women raised fruits and vegetables at home. And then took them to the village or town market to sell. Women were also street vendors and artisans. Now, today, we know these types of jobs are important positions in many countries. And during the time of the Mexican Revolution, the jobs were also important, but the women were not paid well for doing these jobs. So, what Jimenez was trying to accomplish was to get higher pay for women? Correct. That was one of her goals, and it was part of her plan for reform. And if I didn't already mention it, she called her ideas for reform the plan. Now, I also want to talk about another woman who was an important political figure during this time period. And that was Hermila Galindo. Hermilia Galindo. Was she a schoolteacher like Jimenez? No, she was a writer. And she was very young when the revolution began. In fact, she was only 15 years old. But she was an excellent writer and was a feminist advocate. She became the editor of a feminist magazine and had excellent writing and public speaking skills. Carranza, one of the people we talked about yesterday, had Galindo give a welcoming speech because she supported his government. She was known for advocating equal rights for men and women, and she even went to the Constitutional Convention to argue that women should have the right to vote. Was she successful in getting voting rights for women? No, she wasn't. This was one of her unpopular ideas, and she had a lot of them. But when the idea of woman suffrage was not included in the Constitution, she threatened to run for a seat in the legislature. And well, the idea of woman suffrage continued to be argued after the revolution, and during the 1920s and 1930s, other women who were involved in politics used some of Galindo's ideas. So, you are probably thinking, well, If she had so many unpopular ideas, why was she important to the revolution? Am I right? I can tell you she was important, and for this reason. Even though she took some unpopular stands on topics, she addressed feminist problems and had the courage to bring these problems to the attention of the people and the government. She demanded improvement in a lot of areas, and women who were active in the political scene years later 
continued Galindo's fight. Now, tomorrow we will talk about the role of women on the battlefield. Now get ready to answer the questions. You may use your notes to help you answer. Number 12. What is the talk mainly about? Number 13. Why does the professor mention Carranza? Number 14. What does the professor say about Jimenez? Number 15. According to the professor, what was Galindo's importance? Number 16. What does the professor say about the Mexican Revolution? Listen again to part of the talk, then answer the question. No, she wasn't. This was one of her unpopular ideas, and she had a lot of them. But when the idea of women's suffrage was not included in the Constitution, she threatened to run for a seat in the legislature. Number 17. What is the professor referring to? This was one of her unpopular ideas.